Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to call this a class series where I get to share tips here and there for upcoming makeup artists and just to share my experiences that I've had as a makeup artist in my six year experience. So the first tip is capital. Come up with a budget depending on what you can afford. Uh, I like the fact that nowadays there's so many brands uh, that are affordable and are full coverage. So research on the type of product you would want on your kit. And this should be based on the foundation that you even use for yourself. Like for example, for me when I started out, that was in 2014, I was a huge fan of Black Opal. I still, I'm still a fan of Black Opal because I'm a dark skinned woman and I feel Black Opal shades are really rich in the dark skinned woman and I used to like the fact that with black opal depending on the faces that I used to deal with I didn't have to use another shade to blend in most of the time you find one shade is just enough is the exact shade for a particular person so that was one thing that I loved about black opal so that's uh, there was Mary Kay back then there was Sleek but I, I settled for black opal so right now there's so many brands there's Maybelline there's Juvia's Place uh, Mary Kay still is good, there's sleek, there's a huge variety of brands coming up each and every time. So there's no excuse whatsoever that you can't find affordable, affordable makeup that is full coverage. So that's for foundation. Then look for, for a startup, get like four different shades at least, from the darkest to the caramel type, nutmeg-ish, to the lightest, you know, and then one that is just neutral, like a warm neutral tone as for your foundation shades. And then as well, the same thing also for your concealers. And sometimes if you have a problem blending in someone else, getting to someone's shade, you can use some of your concealers. I would recommend Elegal Pro has always been my favorite concealers of all time. Yes, there are other concealers, but I just love Elegal Pro. And also they're very, very affordable. The lipstick shades uh, have a red, pink, purple, just the, the, the basic colors. Uh, pink, purple, red, uh, burgundy, maroon. So many people like burgundy and a nude. And nude, you need to have two types. Nude for dark skin uh, people and nude for the light skin because they're totally, that is beige. They're totally two different shades. And yeah, then lipstick, pencils, uh, bronzer, you can just have one palette. You can have two palettes of eyeshadow, one that has very warm, earth, earthly toned colors, and then another one with like vibrant, uh, bright colors, pink, green, yellow, whatever. Then for blush, maybe you can have two palettes. Blush, you can have maybe a pink and probably a coral one. Coral is like orange-ish. And then that is for blush and then a bronzer you can just have one and then highlighter probably you can have two one that you can use on dark skin women and the other one you can use for light skin women and for those who have a medium tone you can blend the darker bronzer and the lighter one to get to their you know to a bronzer that fits uh, their skin tone you just find a way you figure out a way just to like look for very affordable uh, brands like blush and bronzers you can get them from sleek Lipsticks you can get from Maybelline. Maybelline has they have amazing um, lipsticks as well. Um, then eye pencils we can for the eyebrows that is eye pencils you can get the very common ones. Davis eye pencils they've always been the best. And sleek eye pencils are also uh, nice, especially the ones for the lower bottom. I'd, I'd recommend uh, sleek. So just build your kit. Don't have the pressure to buy everything at once. You can build your kit as you go. That is just a startup. You're just building your kit, but. People come from different backgrounds. If you're privileged enough to buy everything at once, well and good. You can go all out. You can get from the most expensive uh, makeup, uh, makeup brands to the least expensive because you're going to have variety of uh, clients who ask you, I only want, especially for weddings, a bride can tell you, I just want MAC. And maybe you have Mary Kay or Black Opal. So if you're privileged enough to get um, the most expensive makeup brands, you can decide and say, I can have a Fenty for the high-end clients. Or you can say you'll have Estee Lauder. Or you can say you can have Pat McGrath or MAC for high-end uh, clients. You can have that. That, that that can be a very good advantage for you but for those who don't just look for a good a good makeup brand with good coverage and don't feel bad when a client tell you i only apply a certain uh, product on my face it's it's okay it's you it's your brand you're, you're just starting out it's okay just be content with you just starting out small there's nothing wrong with starting out small there's nothing wrong not being able to afford certain makeup brands it's okay don't feel bad about it don't feel bad when you feel you have less products especially you'll get to a point where you interact with other makeup artists you see they have more products you see their kids are you know they're big they're, they're, they look way professional it's okay it's your skill that matters at the end of the day just believe in yourself just work hard and you're just going to get better by the day so once you're able to get uh, your capital, you've come up with a budget, you've decided what brands you're going to get and the stuff that you're going to get, you, the next step is um, your social media platforms. Have a page where you post your work. Uh, have an Instagram page 
from both Facebook and, and Instagram. Not everyone, not everyone who's on Facebook is on Instagram and not everyone who's on Instagram is on Facebook. Now the next thing will be like, so okay, open an Instagram page. I don't have clients, I have my kid, what do I post? Start with your face, do before and after. That's how I started. Back then, it was Facebook was the thing when I was starting out. People were not really into Instagram that much. So start with your own face before and after. If you have sisters, if you have cousins, if you have neighbors or friends, use their faces. That's how I started out. I use, then you, from your friends, don't focus on one skin tone. Like just try with the different uh, shades. Maybe you have a friend who's very light. You have one who's extremely dark. You have one who has a medium uh, skin tone. Just be posting their before and afters and take nice pictures. Use your phone. Don't stress yourself. You have to get a Canon camera or a Nikon camera. Nowadays we have uh, phone cameras as low as even 10,000, 8,000 or 6,000. Get just a good phone and just be taking nice pictures. Then you'll have to learn the skill of just editing a good picture. Don't, don't, in a bit, don't be the type of makeup artist where the pictures you post of the, are nothing close to the original color when people come to them in person. So just take nice pictures and just edit them as simple as you can. Do not put too many filters, you know. Just be as realistic as you can. So yeah, on your social media platforms. Also, when it comes to creating a page for your social media platforms, come up with your page, a name, sorry, that is easy to remember, like Glam by so-and-so, or Makeup by, for me, I wanted to do Makeup by Susan, but I remember why not use SK, Susan Kamene would be easier. So use a name, don't use your, okay, this is, okay, this is just for me. If you're a lady, don't use your, like for me, I'm Susan Kamene Makali. I wanted to say Susan, makeup by Susan Makali, but then I remember Makali is my dad's name. So when I get married, it means I'll drop Makali's name. So I say, let me go for Susan Kamene. Use a name, even when you get married, you don't have, it doesn't tamper with your business. You know, you have to secure the bag as a woman. You're building your own empire. So yes, use a name that in future you don't have to change it. You know, it's your own empire that you're building. So be very careful with the name that you use, that you don't have to make any changes uh, here and there. Once you come up with the name, you can create a logo, very important. A logo goes a long way because people will relate to it. People, when they see that particular logo, they'll remember, oh, that's so-and-so's uh, brand or makeup name. Or once they, when, when people get to familiarize with the logo, they're able to know this brand belongs to so-and-so, so-and-so does makeup. Then talk about what you do. Anywhere you go, talk about what you do. Whether you're in a funeral, whether you're in a club party, whether anywhere you go, even when you're going to buy groceries at the Mama Boga, tell her, tell them, you know, your next breakthrough could be, can come from anywhere. Let's don't have this mindset that you have to be in a networking event. You have to be in a conference. You have to be in a room full of the, the who's and who's to get your breakthrough. Your breakthrough, you can even be in a matter to meet someone, talk to them, tell them what you do. And they're the next big thing. Be confident about it. Uh, be passionate about what you do. Believe in yourself. Don't talk as if you're not really sure or you look like you're 50-50. You're talking about your brand. So own it. You know, it's you no matter how small some of these brands that you see them they came you hear some of these stories of how these big brands came about and they're like oh my god so talk talk about what you do everywhere you go i'll give an example there was a particular time i was from the club and i was passing by chicken inn to buy um what is it called chicken i said go home and a lady when we're at the counter waiting for our orders a, uh, a lady asked me i like i like your eyeshadow what brand is, is it Someone can stop you sometimes. Sometimes in town, someone can ask you, ah, what lipstick is that? You're like, oh, this lipstick is blah, 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 blah. Oh, and by the way, I'm a makeup artist. I do makeup. This is my number. Oh, when it comes to talking about your business, also have a business card. I know not so many people like using the business card, but it's, it gives you that professional touch. So just have a business card on the side because sometimes you could be talking to someone, their phone is off, and that is how you lose a client. Maybe their phone is off. Yes, I know sometimes you can tell someone directly, send my number. When you hear someone who needs makeup services, just call me. So just have that business card cut as an extra touch to your brand. Any business, like they say, is not a walk in the park. It is not a bed of roses. It's not easy. You're your own king and slave at the same time. This leads me to the next point, which is to research. You will have to research. Don't say, I'm just a makeup artist. I'm going to learn how to do eyeshadow and eyebrows and, 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 and apply lipstick and foundation. Research. Go that extra mile. Look around. Like right now, the market is so saturated, but it's okay. Don't say like, oh, there's so many makeup artists, so there's no need to do this. No. If, if it's your passion, and this is what I normally tell anyone who, this is 
just even for anyone who wants to venture into business be passion driven because they are more like right now we're going through a pandemic i am 100 percent sure people who started business with the mindset i just want to make money I just want to be rich and make it big and fly to whatever whatever if your intention in business is to just to make money there are areas you're going to give up you find yourself giving up wanting to start another business but if you're passion driven you will still that passion will get you through the hardest of times and that is what is keeping me to stay afloat and continue with what I'm doing. There are no clients coming in. I'm just getting one one client. But I'm asking myself, what else can I do to just make sure Makeup by SK stays afloat? Makeup by SK is on the map. It's just out there. People can just see it. People can see my logo and my videos. So be passion driven. Research. Always research. Every day make it a point to research. Make it a point to do something that is leading you one step closer to you achieving your goals. And sometimes it can feel like... From the outside, other people might think you're just in one place, but this is just between you and your God. You know you're moving. In, to some people, they might not see you're making any moves, but you know when you're alone in that room, alone in the house, alone wherever you are, you know the moves that you're making, and it's fine. Just move silently. Your success will make the noise later in future, and that is okay. You don't even have to explain to people, you know, I'm doing this or having to prove yourself. And I'm saying this because when you're starting out, sometimes you really feel... You know, there's nothing much you're doing. There's no impact. Trust me, there is, and you're going to see it later in life. So, and then practice. I remember I really struggled when I started out. I was really good at doing my own eyebrows, but when it get, but when it got to doing uh, eyebrows on someone else, it, it wasn't coming out the way I wanted. Then I realized I practiced so much on myself. So my hand is used to doing it on myself, but when it comes to another person, that, that, that's the struggle where I was. So I said, I'm going to be. That's when I say, use your friends, or relatives, or your mom, your sister. Practice on them so that you're able to know, uh, you know, the angles, how to place your hand and the angles that you're going to adjust to when doing someone else's makeup in, so that you won't be too slow. Because when you're dealing with clients, you're dealing with time, and there's a time of also speed, especially if you're dealing with a set like a production, weddings. So practice, please practice as much as you can. Coming, coming up with the red card, that is your prizes. How do you come up with this? You will come up with your red card depending on the products you have. And then depending on okay where you live, you see what are the costs from the car. Are you driving? Are you a makeup artist who has a car? What type of a car are you driving? What fuel does it consume? Okay, if you are using Uber or a taxi, if you, yeah, if you're using taxi, that is how much cost do you incur generally? With time, you will tell. You you're able to tell you get clients along this side so much, and this is where I stay. So you're able to continue to see I uh, money spend this much on, on Uber. So for me, how I started out, I remember. I, my money used to go to taxis. We didn't even have Uber at that time. So a lot of my money really went in on taxis. Sometimes I wish I took a financial course to just know how to manage finances. That is one thing I'm going to talk about. Yes. Um, so a lot of my money went into taxi. I didn't know how to to, to, to buy. Even though, even in my red card, I used to go plus taxi, but I felt some things I could just sell. So later, like after two years, I used to mix. So let's say I have a client who lives in Mauritius. And I stay in Ati River. I can't take a car from Ati River to Norwich. It's going to be around 1500 to 2000. So what I normally do, you can take a matatu wherever you stay. Take a matatu, get to town. T town is very central. And then when you get to town, take a car from Norwich. It could be 300 or 400. You've saved, you see. Or sometimes you you have a client in Westlands. You have a client. There are places you can't even use a matatu. You have a client in Runda. You see. You just make sure you're in town. When you get to town, use a taxi. And, and get to back then I used to have my own taxi guys so we used to negotiate on the rest but I spent a lot of money on taxi so really uh, make sure that's how you come up with the red card what are, what are the costs you have incurred from your products from the transport or if it's fuel that is how I came up uh, with your red card I can't quote it for you because I don't know the products you have I don't know the brands you have so it's, you're the one who knows your budget uh, your kit best once you come up with your red card you're going now to be dealing now you're able to take in clients and bookings do not take bookings without a down payment do not if you do not, even if it's a friend defining you, a relative, a colleague, always ask for a down payment. It is very, very important, and that's how you're able. That's when you can say you're officially booked. You can't say you're booked with no down payment. It doesn't work like that. I remember when I started out, I used to take, especially if someone has referred you, someone calls you a, a friend or a relative, so-and-so is having a wedding, having a function, and would you do their makeup, you say. So you agree because uh, so-and-so has referred me, so there's no way this one can fail to pay me. <laughs> that is one big mistake. You end up starting to following up on your money, and you know how weddings are. 
the moment those people get into those cars and they leave, the couple has gone for their honeymoon, they, they normally switch off their phone, you don't know where you're going to reach out to them, you call that friend who has who referred you to them, they're like, oh, I told, it becomes a brutal type of situation, and you're there, you've given it your all and you have no money. So always insist on a down payment depending who it is, and this leads us to the point of respect. Let people respect your hustle, no matter how small it is. That is your hustle. You have spent money buying those products. So let nobody look at you like you're just doing makeup. No, that's your business. It puts, people should put some respect on your, on, your, on, your, on your hustle. Let them respect it and also respect it yourself. So please have a... There, it depends. Also, there are people who you can write a contract, especially if you're dealing with production adverts. Adverts, mostly adverts or uh, films. There's short films, maybe they're on TV, and sometimes it's a contract. They tell you we're not able to pay you upfront. Make sure a contract is involved and agree on everything. Let everything be down on paper and you sign. And still on the issue of clients. I remember the first six months when I started out, I dealt with so many uh, music artists, so many celebrities, so many personalities. And please sometimes... You know, as a makeup artist, you're there, they have their friends coming in, the managers are coming in, producer is there, you know, they're having a good time, they're having their own things they're discussing. Don't be the type of makeup artist who is nosy, you know, they didn't ask you for an opinion of something. Maybe they're just joking about stuff. And you're there starting talking, you know, giving your own stories and opinions, talking too much when they didn't even ask you. So <laughs> I learned that because those were my very first clients in the first six months. Celebrities like privacy, celebrities like to be respected. But I think it's not all, we're all humans. Even if you're dealing with a nobody, so, and, okay, nobody, I mean, somebody who is not a celebrity, somebody who's not famous, just respect your, your your clients don't involve yourself in in stories that you were not asked to give your share of your story or your opinions or anything just be quiet just do your job but also you find clients who are very talkative you find clients who like who just like talking and engage with them you know don't you know when you keep quiet sometimes the people also will say oh, she has an attitude she doesn't she doesn't talk to her clients she doesn't interact you, you'll be able to see you'll have clients you know sometimes most most times when you're doing makeup it's in the morning the people who are not they're not a morning person. Like I personally, I'm not a morning person. But when I get a client who's talkative, who just like telling me their stuff, they're telling you this, they're laughing, they're bubbly. Just you can now you can you can you can now give your own opinion on stuff or whatever thing that you're discussing. Also, another thing I need to mention on clients. Um, you should also respect your clients as much as you want them to respect your person. Also respect your clients. I'm saying this because you're going to meet all sorts of people. People. There are people with no morals out here, the people who have an attitude out here, the people who don't know how to just coexist with people. So respect them regardless. You're going to meet clients with an attitude, you're going to meet clients who are very rude, very demanding. You're going to meet clients who don't respect you. They kind of look down on you. They kind of think like, you're just a makeup artist. You're going to meet them. So you just respect yourself. Just respect yourself. Just believe in what you do. And it's okay. It's okay. Those people, you have to meet them in life. Just respect them regardless. The next point is hygiene, and hygiene here are two things, you as a person and your kid. So let me start as a person. Um, I believe everyone, you should look, look presentable, be neat, you know, you're touching people's faces, you're, very, you're at a very close range doing someone else's makeup, and you can imagine you're not clean, you know, shave as a lady, have a deodorant, wear some very nice uh, perfume or cologne, it doesn't have, and don't go overboard with cologne in the name of smelling good. Just a decent amount to just smell nice because you're at a very close range. Your mouth as well, brush your teeth, brush your tongue, and sometimes that is not enough. Let me be honest, sometimes in the morning you wake up, yes, you brush your teeth and tongue, but still, you know, you've not eaten anything. So for me, I usually have a gum, PK to be precise, I like PK, or the Orbit ones. The sweet mint orbit ones, the ones that are really, really minty, they're really fresh, they give you that fresh breath in the morning. Just have that, you know, in your mouth. Because now when you meet clients who's always talking, you're talking to a client, you're, you're at a very close range, and imagine anyone has experienced having a close, talking to someone and their breath is not fresh. Everyone has experienced that. So imagine you're doing makeup, someone has to endure that bad breath for one hour. So please, be clean, be decent, you know, be well groomed. This is for times where you're going to do makeup at a wedding. Remember you're going to the girl's home. The dad is there. Maybe the uncles come. They have brothers. The aunties come there. And, and you're there wearing, you know, you're always bending all the time doing makeup on someone. You know, you're doing this, you're adjusting to this side. Just be decent as a lady. Fingers, 
should also smell good have some those hand creams that smell nice maybe you're from eating nyamachoma or especially weddings you know you're told to have breakfast of course they ask the makeup artist also to eat something maybe there's nyamachoma some sausages you've eaten some eggs you're peeling some boiled eggs and your fingers have touched some food and then you you don't you know washing your hands sometimes is not enough or if you have some wipes that smell nice clean up your nails because when you're holding the brush and you're at this close range on someone's face or you're holding that beauty blender and you're here blending their faces and your fingers smell onions or some eggs or some chicken you've eaten mm -mm. you're going to make your client feel very uncomfortable sometimes if it's also that time of the month as ladies also you know um, make sure you're Everything is fresh. Everything you're wearing is, is, is fresh. The makeup artist, she's called Miss Miss Shake, or I don't know, Miss Shake. Yeah, she, on Instagram. She did an Insta story where she asked people, what are some of the things you don't like about makeup artists? And we, so many people are saying, someone was smelling funny, someone was smelling sweat, especially, I know not every makeup artist, I don't have a car myself, so you don't have a car, or maybe you can't even afford taxi or Uber to go to a client. So you're there, you have pandered a motorbike, ume pandanduthi, ume sweat, ume arukisha, you get there, you're sweaty, and you're dealing with a client, you're there opening your hands, and this, this so it, it is, it is so bad. I'm telling you, a client may never refer you, your work could be good, but a client may never refer you because you are just smelling fine, smell nice. If you have body issues, you know, women, we have our own issues sometimes that we deal with that other people cannot understand. It is not an excuse. If you're the type who sweats too much, have some then deodorant in your knee. You can excuse yourself, go to the washroom, use some baby wipes, wipe yourself. If it's extreme, have even an extra top. If you know by the time you get there, you'll be sweaty, have an extra top, excuse yourself. I'm telling you, I'd rather you be late a bit or get on time and just keep by yourself and just, you know, be clean because hygiene is, is number one. It is just the number one thing when, for a makeup artist because even someone starts feeling even the products are not, uh -uh, are not, your products will be legit because someone may think if you can't take care of your body, how are you taking care of your kit? Also be cleaning your kit. Sometimes you can have all the nice brands, but you know those stains that come from foundation and lipsticks and eye pencils and blah blah blah. When they're too stained, someone thinks you're dirty. Someone thinks they're going to have the, an infection on their face. You're dealing with people's faces. Please be mindful of hygiene. I insist and I insist. Every time you're done with a client, wherever you are, go back home, clean your kit. Even without corona, I used to have, I used to clean my kit with the, what is it called, baby wipes. Or you can get the, the Dettol uh, wipes. Anything just to remove any bacteria from the kit and then leave them out to dry out. Clean your brushes with soap and water and leave them out in open air to dry out. And also when you're cleaning your brushes, please use whatever you're using. Let it have a very good scent. Make sure that you rinse them well because there's nothing as bad using a brush that has a damp smell. That smells like a towel. You know the way a towel that didn't dry up uh, well. That's how a brush sometimes smells that didn't dry up well. So in, get, get a nice like... Uh, there's a certain detergent I use, it's called Zenta. This you can also you can use Ariel, the one with Downy. I saw another person sharing you can use that morning fresh, um, that the, the bar, that bar soap that is used for your washing utensils. A morning fresh again, it removes all the it leaves the brush, it looks sparkling clean. Also, Omo, the one with comfort, oh, it smells really nice as well. You can use that anything that just smells nice and removes all the foundation stains and whatever use that clean your kit all the time whether you're using like a traveling bag whether you're using the professional kit always make sure it's clean leave it outside sometimes remove everything from that kit and spread out everything let them dry let, it, let them even stay overnight openly and then because there's so much bacteria that comes with makeup also learn to adjust don't be the makeup artist who stays in one place always just adjust it depends it depends what's your end goal i've, I've seen makeup artists who started online then will tend to get their own place now they have clients coming to their own place for me personally i really I'm, I'm really thrilled with the online thing i just want to go the online way it's just my thing but i can't wait to get to a point where i'll be collaborating with makeup brands or any skincare brands you know and just make money out of it to advertise those brands uh, on my social media platforms that's for me that's the direction i want to take i've just been inspired by some amazing beauty influencers that i see on social media and 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 that's the the, the, the journey i want also to take so with time you will develop other things come in you know the point is to just just start just get into the process once you get in you start to have you you'll find your way to navigate you know and and your, your way towards your purpose and your goal to what you really want for this uh beauty industry also adjusting i also mean in terms of 
the ch you'll be faced with challenges you're going to be faced with ups and downs so yes sometimes it's it's okay not to be okay but it's not okay to just stay in that one particular situation or whatever season you're going through you're going to be faced with you know this life is very unpredictable who knew that corona would make this world come to a standstill so approach your business also with that mindset anything can happen anywhere so always develop this habit and mindset to when this particular thing happens how am i going to how am i going to the next step yes sometimes it's always good it is always good to take you know that breathe figure out how you're going to move to the next thing figure out how am i going to dust myself off off and pick myself up so always have that at the back of your mind i also forgot to mention one thing to finances um enroll that is one thing that is actually one of my goals this year enroll in a class and i would suggest autonomy is the only entity that i've seen that deals with um how to manage finances personally and and it's more important because you know how you manage your finances uh, personally will reflect also to your business so enroll in a class or a course that is helping you how to manage business just a short course uh, that helps you manage your businesses your finances and and so on because maybe in future one day you're going to have people working at your place maybe you're going to have a place as a makeup artist how you're going to manage employees how what is the procedure to use to hire people and blah 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 all that so i can't speak much on that because me and finances i have a lot of work to do uh, if there's anything I've left out, kindly add them to the comment section. Anything you need to add, please feel free and just uh, enlighten me as well. So much is happening. There's so many changes that have happened from the time I started. So I can't say I've, whatever I've said is everything. There's more. This life is a journey we learn. One last most important point. You can be the most educated. You can be the most talented. You can have all the connections in this world. You can know the who's and who's in this world. You can have it all. If God is not your number one guide to achieve all these things, you, you're in for a joke. Let God be the center of your plans. Submit all your plans, your desires, your dreams, your vision board, all your goals, submit them to him. Just let him let him be the anchor of all everything that you do just do it for the glory of god just just let him guide you i'm telling you there's some things you will not get it you you will never understand so just have him oh just have him just have him just have him in your life that's it